Hi Q, finally. The the moment has arrived. I've been hearing about this show for years and years and years and years. We're starting off with a metaphor for life. I like where this is going. Mmm. <laughs> Does it contain freedom? And already themes of friendship. Oh. An opening. <laughs> right to it. It's like, hey, you wanna you wanna show about aspiring to challenge and climbing that mountain with your friends? That's what you got. That's what you're gonna get, and we're gonna get right into the opening. High Q with two exclamation points. This is really nice, like a classic just feel good rock oriented opening i was into volleyball for like two seconds in high school <laughs> but i didn't have the discipline to climb that mountain with my friends unfortunately i want to struggle and fall and persevere stand back up do it again this is going to be an inspiring one through volleyball very interesting it just looks fun i don't know how to explain it <laughs> it just looks feel good fun nice can't wait Episode 1, the end and the beginning. Okay, the Bible slash Xenogears. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Started off with a dream, an idol, maybe a future opponent. Three years and three months later, that's a time skip. In 30 seconds, we covered more ground than My Hero Academia in six seasons. One thing I really regret, if I could go back in time, I would have been way more active in school. And I don't mean classes, although I could have done better in that too. It's just such a rich time. I wish I had seen it more as an adventure. You know, I wish I had the, the mindset I have now where life can just be a playground if you have your needs met. All the time I spent like avoiding things and worrying about things that just didn't matter. Although I guess I'm grateful for having learned that lesson at all, even if I could take it farther than I already have. <laughs> Something tells me Sho is not the loosen up type. What is it, a ragtag squad of amateurs for this club? This reminds me of something from my life in China. At some point I've probably spoken about the time I was put in charge of, uh, I guess you'd call it a delinquent class because their teacher had quit and no one else wanted to do it. There were three guys in that class who were particularly out to make things difficult for everyone. They're one saving grace and I feel like one of the things that gave them the, the confidence to just not give a crap about anything was that the three of them had put together a team and joined a Shanghai-wide high school basketball tournament and taken first place and that made them like legends. And you gotta give it to them, you know, that's pretty damn cool. The only headway I made with them at all was skipping lunch for a couple weeks or at least a couple days each week for a couple weeks to play basketball with them. Didn't improve their grades at all but at least it kind of brought us some more common ground. Sports is powerful like that and I have respect for anybody who has this kind of drive or commitment to anything. I don't care what it is because I know how special it is, how difficult it is and even how rare it is and they are huge. Better learn the rules for a start. <laughs> He's got a lot of heart. Can you win with heart alone? That seems to be the challenge or the question. Not for long, I take it. Why does this guy look so badass? <laughs> Go to the bathroom, kid. <laughs> oh, a true sportsman. You caught me just as I was about to shit my pants. <laughs> it's more like it. Damn, this guy just dishes it out. But I guess he can back it up. <laughs> Sounds like there's a story there. They both have different pieces of the puzzle. Show is obviously unique and important. Show seems to be that beautiful 
unbridled heart and spirit, you know? Maybe similar to Deku in that way. Whereas, I didn't get his name. The senpai is grit and experience, reality, that Sho doesn't have. And that, in a way that's hard to explain, has maybe disconnected him from the, the purity of spirit that is Sho. So the two of them, I don't know if they'll be friends or rivals or both or whatever, but there's something in it for each of them. You know, I've been on both sides. Like, this is a really bizarre example, but it's just what comes to mind. When I first came to Korea a long time ago, I was nothing but energy. Like, I was going to take over the whole world. To the point where it's weird to think about, but people around me that had already lived here for some time were telling me to, like, calm down and to temper my expectations and sort of had this attitude like, well, you'll see. There was a little bit of cynicism that leaked out of them that they were trying to instill on me. And they were right about a lot of things. I mean, they were objectively right. But part of their cynicism was them trying to protect themselves, I felt. And now having lived abroad for quite some time and being back in Korea for the second time, there are a lot of difficulties about living here. And now I'm meeting people who are here for the first time and I'm seeing their energy and enthusiasm and I get the urge to kind of try to like save them some of the pitfalls and the mistakes of first arriving here. But at the same time, I want to attach to their energy because it reminds me of how I was. I, it reminds me of the, the pure joy of like starting it, starting the adventure. And it makes you question if you haven't gotten a little bit stagnant, you know, if you haven't let some of those things wear you down and hem in your potential that comes from just raw energy that show has. You have experience, that experience is valuable and it's really difficult, but I think it's important not to over extrapolate that. Your experiences are just the experiences you had. They're no indication of what you're really capable of and what the full potential is. I mean, I mean, potential is almost always going to be more massive than can be imagined. And so there are definitely times in just about anything where truths about the world and actual experiences, while protecting you in practical ways, cause you to overlook things that you otherwise wouldn't without that experience, if that makes sense. It's a very difficult balance to strike. I think that's part of what's so compelling about this kind of uh, dynamic that you see a lot in shows. You, you see the veteran who's a little bit, you know, weary of certain things, taking on a, a pupil and giving them a warning while also silently praying for their success and hoping that they're wrong in their assessment of what's possible. What? That seems dangerous to me. He's so motivated, he just regained full control of his bowels. This is a little bit late. This is all just a little bit late. <laughs> but yeah, I love the spirit. I'm worried for you. Oh, I'm worried for you. I'm... But Sho seems like the kind of kid to be more motivated by loss. This is gonna be a reality check. But maybe you can get in a few good hits. And flashback. <laughs> Mid-game flashback. That would have been a whole different anime. <laughs> and I would have watched it and loved it. Am I understanding this counting right? It's 15, not 51, right? I'm on the boy volleyball team. Singular. They even brought a sign that said certain victory. It worked! <laughs> When you use your head. Welcome to volleyball. <laughs> hey, believe in him. Damn! Kids got hops. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of what I expected. Are we feeling good yet? I am. <laughs> yeah, I get to see it twice. Boom. He got it. Hell yeah. Tip it up. You gotta use your head a little bit. Then I'm gonna slam everything. Yeah. Clear contrast between the two of them. Sho and his team are getting obliterated, but are supporting each other. These guys are obliterating, but fighting. Something's missing. I do not understand this. Why am I- wait, hold on. What is the score? Oh wait, is it 7 to 23? And it's second round? Is that what it means? All heart, yep. Such a big metaphor here already. Amazing. Amazing. Fight for every point. I'm mean, credit to these kids too, they're learning so fast. Okay, never mind. 
Shell's gonna do it. Shell's got it. He's going for it. My god. He's a beast. Does the potential scare you, Kageyama? Or does it make you feel alive? <laughs> nice. I'm gonna take down the whole gym while he's at it. I've seen this in real life. I'm lucky enough to be very close to it, actually. One of my closest friends. is also not super tall and was not naturally super built or anything like that, but just a freakish athlete. And if I had to try to attribute it and guess, I'd say, yeah, part of it is probably some kind of natural athletic ability. But knowing him and knowing his personality and seeing how it permeates into everything else he does as well, it's heart and it's this mindset as well. He will never give up. Watching him for long enough, you get the sense that there are no obstacles for him that are unnecessary. He never puts things in front of himself that slow him down. He'll put everything on the line for every single point. I mean, we're not really volleyball players. We were more into basketball and football. He's broken his toe open, hitting a fence to make a catch in a courtyard game of touch football. You'll be wrestling with him and, you know, flip him over his head and he'll land on his feet. We hung out mostly in the Bronx where I'm from. And so we were playing with, with a lot of good basketball players. It probably happened, but I, I don't remember ever losing a game of pickup basketball when he was on my team. No matter how skilled other people were, no matter how much of a point deficit we had, he would just put the team on his back. He would lead and coordinate and we would end up winning. And it didn't stop there. I mean, at I think 5'8 and, you know, 140 pounds naturally. He was so determined to play football that he was the only walk-on on his college football team after a year of dedicated training. And, you know, we're older now and don't live in the same place, so we don't play sports anymore but he just took that and, and kept running with it and is just successful in everything he does. And that might sound hard to believe. It might sound a little bit contrived given the nature of this episode. Like it fits a little bit too perfectly and sounds too much like an ideal. But I think that's the point. You know, like I know when I do things, there's a part of me that's expecting failure. There are things that creep in that I consider, you know, for example, if I'm playing basketball, you start to lose, you start to brace yourself for the loss, right? It's like, well, all right, well, I played a bad game in the beginning. You start to rationalize it, sort of already accepting defeat. I just think that however he managed to compose himself, he doesn't have that. It all just becomes energy and fuel for him to work harder. And he's able to just use it so productively. He just rises to the top naturally. And there's a salient point, you know, it's not about the person necessarily. It's about the process and maybe a question of something like, what could you accomplish if you totally get out of your own way? And if doing exactly what you wanted was a singular focus. And I think that's why things like this often end up being so compelling because we can kind of feel at a certain level that there are obstacles we know we could remove or there's a potential we know we could reach, but it's kind of terrifying to go to those ex extremes. It's hard to go to that length. Nothing but training. This is a critical point. I mean, I know which way it's going to go, but realistically it could go either, either way. お前がコートに君臨する王様なら。そいつを倒して。俺が一番長くコートに立ってやる。Alpha's goal is just playing longer. 勝ち残りたかったら強くなってみろよ。He sees it. He recognizes it. 俺に足りないもの。Teammates that are skilled. <laughs> God, just more practice. Yeah, it's hard not to be moved by that, right? Everyone knows greatness when you see it, even if you hate it. Yeah, that's making me want to go train for something, anything. And if the volleyball anime doesn't work out, you got a harem one waiting. Oh, they lost. Then we start high school, the beginning of a new career, where maybe they actually have a boys team. Priorities. <laughs> okay. What's with the crow? What, are we on the same team? Nice. Rivals slash friends. And credits. Awesome. What a great first episode. It'd be great if this was just running. Just him running. Looking forward to getting to know the extended cast as well. I feel like it's going to be pretty rich. I'm running while crying. Some emotional running. Hey, turn it around. In keeping with the lyrics. And the crow again. What does it mean? What is the crow? Who is the bird? Huh. Very cool. I mean, the show making it so clear what its themes are from the first episode, which is not to say there won't be a lot more as well, but honestly, there doesn't need to be because it's so important and actually really hard to get to. 
Like I think this kind of ideal is simple seeming maybe at first glance if you are watching a show, but to actually live this way is in my opinion, at least for me, and I would guess for most people, a life's work. To see every failure as a challenge and opportunity, to see every setback as motivation, to fight for every point, or at least, you know, for every point that's meaningful, both in sports and just life in general, putting aside fear and self-doubt and personal obstacles, feelings of a lack of self-worth, taking a leadership role, which I think is, is part of the equation since it's actually kind of rare and you're going to get noticed and people are going to want you to fail, make fun of you for daring to have bigger dreams than them. There's just a lot of challenges that go with it. I, I think it needs constant reminding. I feel like shows like this, they keep me centered. They keep me anchored and they keep me reaching up. Will it get cliche at times? Maybe. Am I going to love it? I have a very, very good feeling I will. <laughs> I'm also curious to see how the, the plot develops and how far they can take it, just because I know this anime is on the longer side. That is the first episode of Haikyuu. I'll see you very soon for episode two.